That's me, Calvin Botts. This is my town. My town with its wide streets, its peaceful boulevards. <laughs> my town with its warm, friendly eating places. Hi, Dal. Calvin. <laughs> Hello, Mother. Drop dead. Hey, Connie, did you hear that? Your mother talked to me. She's softening. No, I don't think so, Cal. Mother thinks we should break up. Break up? But we've been going together five years. Yeah. She wants to know where we're going. Besides, Mother says you have no future in show business. No future? Your mother, I... Now, Calvin, remember. Someday, Mother, may be your own flesh and blood. Please, I'm not well. Anyway, didn't I just make 250 bucks? And haven't you got 200 of it to add to our wedding fund? That ain't bad for one of us at the Waldorf. But, but Calvin, it's nothing you can count on. How often can you slip on their washroom floor? I'm naming all the papers, didn't I? That's all it takes, a little publicity, and they come begging for you. <laughs> 400 bucks in our wedding fund. It won't be long now. No cream. I'll get it. I was going to. What guy? What have you been up to lately? What are you talking about? Calvin, there was a, a man here looking for you all morning. Yeah? yeah? Well, like I was saying, publicity. Probably a director from one of the big musical shows, huh? <laughs> no? I'll see you later. Hey, Cal. Huh? Yeah? There was a guy here looking for you. You just missed him. He went up the street that way. <laughs> what do you want, Pops? I don't know. He was asking all about you. You better come in. I'll fix you up. Yeah? Let me see. No. I think that should do it. Thanks, Pops. Hi, Cal. What's new? <laughs> Hi, Cal. You never look better. Always oh, he? Who's who? The guy that's after you. Oh, he's been here too, huh? He phoned twice. Who is he? I don't know. What have you done, Cal? The phony minx again? I swear. I haven't seen a squirrel for a month. Look, Cal, I'm your friend. You can trust me. Duke, I swear. I, I suppose that's him? It ain't opportunity. <laughs> yes? I've been told that I might find Calvin Botts here. What's the charge? I mean, uh... Who, pray, is looking for Mr. Botts? The name is Graves, Horace Graves. No title, like uh, Inspector Graves or something? Look, could you put me in touch with Calvin Botts? Calvin Botts, Calvin Botts. Ever hear that name, Ludwig? Ludwig, uh, Botts? Well, there was the fellow with, with the big head on the whiskers and the toupee on his shins. He was the nice... Uh, he was... Uh, but his name was Schmatt. Schmatt. <laughs> this uh, box you're looking for, he owes you money or something? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, I owe him. Huh? Uh, I'm, I'm Calvin Botts. I thought you were. Huh? I, all the, <laughs> that's just a joke. Oh, well, come in, Mr. Graves. Have a seat. Oh, thank you. Did you say something about owing me something? Yes. Do you remember old Charlie Parker? He was my business partner. Used to be in vaudeville years ago. Charlie Parker. Parker. Charlie Parker. Doesn't mean a thing to me. You must remember him. He never forgot you. 
Don't you remember about ten years ago, 1944, in Seattle? He was down and out, and you loaned him a hundred dollars. Me? Him? I did? Yes, you must remember. Seattle, Charlie Parker. Yeah, I should, but I can't. It doesn't... I... 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, all comes back to me. Yeah, me too. Good old Charlie Parker. Now, Parker. just a minute. You are Calvin Botts, aren't you? The one who used to be in vaudeville. The same one. Comical cow. Fancy songs, that's snappy patter. <laughs> uh, I've been looking for you for five years, and I never would have found you if it hadn't been for that item in the paper. Well, I'm certainly glad you found us. It was the last thing old Charlie said to me before he passed away. Hardest, he said, you know what that hundred meant to me. I want you to find Calvin Botts and pay it back. That was the last thing he said. <laughs> and then he went. I'm glad he didn't go till he got that out. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Mr. Grace. Yeah, it's not nice to have seen you. <laughs> well, you've no idea what it meant to good old Charlie. Of course, the big thing was he wanted me to cut you in on the gold mine. Good old Charlie. Gold mine? Wait a minute, fella. No gold mines, friend. Yeah, you're playing with a couple of city boys, friend. I can see that. Actually, I couldn't cut you in if I wanted to. Yes, sir. I'm Calvin's manager, and I'm a little too smart for... How was that again, friend? Hmm? You see, I found Mr. Botts too late. All the shares have been spoken for. And although it was good old Charlie's last request, there's no way I can cut you in now. Well, anyway, thanks for the hundred. <laughs> uh, what's your hurry, friend? Hey, Duke, we don't want nothing to do with the gold mine. Uh, suppose a certain party had about $400 he was saving for a wedding. And he wanted to invest that money in your gold mine, Duke. Four hundred dollars? He'd probably triple it in a month when the new vein comes in. Duke, Duke, please. But as I said, there's no more stock available. What are you trying to do, make a bomb out of good old Charlie? <laughs> All right, Mr. Botts. For good old Charlie's sake, I'm willing to cut you in on my chair as high as you want to go, and glad to have you with us. Well, uh, I, uh, <laughs> where are we going? Well, couldn't we talk this over a little further at lunch, perhaps? Oh, lunch? Brave. Fine. Uh, shall we say the Ritz? The Ritz? Ah, uh, that's for tourists. There's a little place down the street they're all going to. Mother's Beanery. Ah, <laughs> that sounds quaint. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Meet you at 115. 115. I'll be there. Thank you. For the last time, no. But, Connie, it's the opportunity of a lifetime. I don't care. We're not putting our wedding money into any gold mine. Oh, Connie, baby, don't you want to live? You want to spend the rest of your life smoking cheap cigars? Well, I... Don't you want to live in a penthouse with butlers walking around full of champagne? Well, Connie, the man says we'll triple the money in three weeks. Well, all right. If it's really what you want, Calvin, but... I hope you know what you're doing. Yeah, sure. Now, the guy will be here any minute. Get the money out of the safe, will you? Sure. <laughs> Would the gentlemen mind turning their backs while I work the combination? Huh? Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, this vein is one of the biggest in the history of Colorado. The assayer claims it'll run 500 to the ton. Just loaded with gold. I like gold. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Let's get the freeloaders out of here. Well, dessert and everything. Aren't we the sports? <laughs> Who's paying? Yeah, Mother. I paid. am. You. Mother, I'd like you to meet Mr. Graves. Am I to understand, Miss Davis, that this is your mother? Yeah, what about it? Well, it's just so hard to believe. I would have sworn you were sisters. Now, listen, you... Sisters! You must have been a very young bride. <laughs> Mr. Graves owns the gold mine, Mother. He's letting Calvin invest his money and triple it. Really? Well, a gold mine. Yes, indeed. And it's been wonderful meeting all of you. But now, really, I'm afraid I'll have to go. You see, I'm late for an appointment. Uh, what about the deal, friend? We haven't signed anything. And I always like a gentleman's agreement on paper, friend. Yeah, uh, me too, friend. Well, I'll tell you what you do, Calvin. You drop around and see me this evening. I'm at the athletic club. You bring the money, I'll transfer the stock. Shall we say seven-ish? 
Yeah, sevenish. Fine. It's been a pleasure, Miss Davis. And a very good day to you, my dear. <laughs> hey, kids, a gold mine, triple our money. We'll be rich. Uh, look, Calvin, maybe you better change into your good suit. I'll pick you up at 6.30. Okay. Wait a minute. Just a moment, son. <laughs> Count me in for a hundred. Mother. Here you are, Cal. Thanks, Pops. At a big deal like this, I gotta wear my good suit. Say, uh, Cal. Yeah. About this, uh, this oil mine. What? It's a gold mine. Gold mine, oil mine. Look, I have two, uh, three dollars ahead. Maybe you, you would cut in an old friend, wouldn't you? <laughs> Pops, for all you've done for me, the suits and everything, you're in. <laughs> Little Gypsy Mining Company. Look at that engraving. Oh, you pretty dolls. See, you... me and Connie in for $400. Mother's in for $100. Pop's in for $68. Makes a grand total of five, $568. <laughs> what a sweetheart that graves is, huh? Good old Charlie Parker. Cal, how did you ever come to loan a guy a hundred bucks? Well, they like you. I don't know. I guess I was riding high that day. <laughs> hey, I remember now. I followed a dog act and killed the people. You know, Seattle always was my town. Gene and I slam in that Golden Gate Theater. Remember that finish I used to have? Oh, the Golden State with the Golden Gate, California, here I, Calif... Uh, Calif... Calif... Duke. How did Seattle get in California? Duke, oh, I never played Seattle. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Seattle could have a Golden Gate Theater. It don't have to be no town named Bijou to have a Bijou theater. I know I never played it. That hundred dollars was a come on. We've been taken and you got me into it. Down, boy, down. Listen, I got your bookings right here. Let's see, you said 1944. Our wedding money. The old lady stole. Pop's money. 1944, you played East St. Louis, Peoria, yeah, Sheboygan, yeah, Watkins yeah, Glen, yeah, Dogs yeah, Lake, Idaho, yeah, New yeah, Lot, Salinas, yeah, San Jose, yeah, San... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's all? Yeah. It was right here in San Luis Obispo. The draft board took you off the road. Let me see it. I know it. There's no Seattle, no hundred dollars, no Charlie Parker. What a mess. Yeah. Too bad you insisted on going in on a deal like that. I insisted. <laughs> you got that miss. You and your kids and your champagne. Duke, I'm going to belt you. I'm going to belt you. Now, wait a minute, Cal. It's all your fault. My fault? You've known me for over 20 years, and what have I amounted to? Nothing. So? So, if you're so stupid to listen to a bum like me, you only got yourself to blame. I think I'm going to be a very sick man. <laughs> Good old Charlie. Duke, you got me into this. You got to get me out of it. I just called the athletic club. He's still here. Well, then what are we waiting for? Let's get the cops. Don't panic here. So you throw him in a clink. Do you get your money back? Does mother? Does pop? It ain't going to be no help to have Graves language in jail. This calls for the subtle touch. You're right. We're going bell it out of it. No! <laughs> the main thing is to get everybody's money back, right? Right. So what do you do? What? You have smart up. I do? Sure. How? With brains. Yeah, we're in trouble. Look, guys are ponies after the fast buck. So we play that angle. How do we do that? Who was the greatest pool player in the entire vicinity? Who else? Me. There you are. We give this graves fellow a call. Suggest a little game of pool. Bit a small amount for fun. The guy wins, he gets cocky, we raise the ante, and bingo! Before he knows what's happened, we got the dough back. Duke, it'll never work. Just leave it to Duke. Hello, athletic club? Mr. Graves, room, please. Hello? Hello, uh, Horace? Uh, how are you? Calvin, how are you? What can I do for you? Fine. Uh, Horace, uh, did you ever play any pool? Pool? Well, a little. Why? Well, I, I just took up the game myself, and I, uh, 
I thought maybe you and I could shoot a game or two, you know, for old times' sake. Good old Charlie and all that. Why, certainly, Calvin. Well, I'll, I'll meet you at Mahoney's pool parlor. That's, that's right down the block from Mother's Beanery, you know, uh, at about a half an hour. Fine. Mahoney's pool parlor. I'll be there. How are we doing, boy? Don't we'll take that guy like Admiral Dewey took Richmond. On to the slaughter. Hi. You looking for a game? Yes. I'm expecting a friend, Mr. Calvin Botts. Are well, you playing him? Well, I hope for your sake you're plenty sharp, mister. You mean he's an accomplished player? I thought he was a beginner. You'll find out. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Graves. How are you? Hello, Calvin. Brought company, I see. Yeah, it's Oak. Well, you all set for a nice game, horse? <laughs> There seems to be something wrong there. Hmm? Oh, thanks, Brad. Say, what are we going to play for? Well, it's your little game. Do we say ten dollars? <laughs> yeah, let's say that, but we'll shoot for a buck. <laughs> now, I'll, I'll do what you call make the break, huh? Fine. <laughs> God, I was lucky. Out. Uh, Wee! <laughs> Your turn. Uh, which one do I aim at? Oh, uh, you wow. start with the one ball over there. Oh. the one ball, is that right? Of course. Huh. Easy on the headshots, friend. <laughs> Bully for you, Horace. <laughs> there. There you are. Thanks. I'll put mine in the top row. If I put this one in, I win the whole dollar. Is that right? That's right, Horace. You're catching on. <laughs> hey, wh Horace. Yeah? Don't tell me you're an expert. Well, I warned you. I've played before. <laughs> Good old Charlie. Oh, dear. That silly old white ball went in, too. Uh, but does that matter? Well, well actually... No. As long as you kept one foot on the floor. Uh, that's actually, no. That's the new Culverson ruling. <laughs> well, that, that does it. Here's my dollar. Hey. Now, uh, better luck next time. What? Wait a minute. You can't quit winner. Well, I'm sorry, but I've a number of things to do. They can wait. I beg your pardon. Come on, Horace. How about another nice little friendly game? <laughs> well, if you insist. We do. All right. What'll it be? A dollar again? Oh, let's raise the stakes a notch just to make the game a little more interesting. Hmm? Well, just as you say. Well, just picking a number out of thin air. How about $568? $568. <laughs> $568. <laughs> well, is that fair? It's fair. Oh, I'm, I, I won from you quite handily, and I... It's fair. All right. That's the way you want it? Here you are. No, I, I haven't got the money on me. Well, then, in that well, case... I'll, I'll put these stock certificates up instead. These, uh, these should be worth $568. Well, shouldn't they, friend? Certainly, only... Call it. It's... Tails. <laughs> you seem to be playing better this time. Well, the fellow gets better with experience. Sure shot. 
Let's see, I'm after the five ball, aren't I? Yeah, right between the six and the eight ball. Too bad it's impossible. Well, the least I can do is try. <laughs> Maybe I can get these two at the same time, with a bit of luck. seem to be playing better yourself. Well, as you say, experience is a great teacher. I could better when he was bouncing them off your head. You ain't pulling that time game on us. We want our money back and we call the police. Now, wait a minute. You're making a terrible mistake. With this mine, good old Charlie. Will you stop dragging good old Charlie into this? I never played Seattle. You never played Seattle? No. Well, then you're the wrong Calvin Box. You bet he is. Well, then you've no right to this stock at all. Forget the stock. Keep your phony stock. Just give us back our money or we'll call the police. All right. If that's the way you want it. No need for the police. Here you are. $568. Wait a minute. Huh? Less the hundred I gave you yesterday. Good day, gentlemen. What? I really pulled that off, didn't I? You know something, Duke? I bet I could beat him if I played him again. <laughs> wow! We've been waiting for you. Yeah, well, I, I know you're, why you're here. I, I know you all found out what happened to the gold mine, but I got some good news for all of you. We have something to tell you, too. <laughs> got it. You better tell it. It's all here in the paper about the little gypsy mining company. Yeah, well, if you'll just let me explain. It's right there on the financial page. Yeah, I know. Our stock went up 43 points in this morning. I understand that, but if... We have tripled our money. I would... Our stock went up 42 points. We tripled our money. Now, what was the good news you had for us, son? <laughs> Well, I wouldn't give to be with good old Charlie right now. <laughs>